Hi, this is Jeff from Media, and in this video, we're going to cover the aspect of editing in Pro Tools called fades. So this, of course, is referring to fade ins and fade outs. Now, as we're chopping the wave up, one thing that's important to remember as far as where you're going to cut it and what kind of fade you're going to make is you're going to want to usually use a zero crossing line. So if we zoom way in, we'll take a look at this here on this wave file. I want to place my cursor right there, right where the waveform cuts through the zero crossing line, then make my chop. Okay, if I happen to do it somewhere like right there and cut it, it's quite possible to have a click or a pop in the audio. That's why it's important to do that. Obviously, you can't always accommodate that, especially if you wanted to cut on the grid lines like I have set up here. So if I go ahead and just put that split in the wave, you can see I'm not exactly on the zero volt line. So what I'd like to do here is make a slight fade. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna make a fade out. Now you can hit shift tab to select till the end of the clip or till the next transient. And so now I have perfectly selected the end of that. Control F on a PC, Command F on a Mac, and you get the fades dialog. So the bottom line is, if you are not able to cut at the zero volt line crossing, this is where fades are going to come into play and be really useful, among other reasons. Let's go through this window just a bit. We have the audition button. This lets you actually preview what the audio is going to sound like once you have made your fade, before you committed to it. Now this next button, when you click it, just lets you see the fade curve without the underlying audio. This is your default view when you open the fades dialog. Now this is just to fade out. The next couple of buttons down below that actually have to do with different views when you're cross fading. And then the next button there is the fade curves with superimposed waveforms. So this lets you check out what you're going to be doing to the waveforms. Now when you're doing cross fades between two different clips, the next couple of buttons come into play. So this button here is for looking at your fade curves and separate views of the waveform fade in and out. The next one is going to show them superimposed to give you yet another view as far as seeing what you're going to be doing to that wave once you've edited it with this fade. The last one shows your fade curves and summed waveforms. So this is going to be a single waveform representing the summed audio output of your crossfade of the clip coming in and going out. I also have zoom in and out buttons. As you can see, that zooms the waveform. This is helpful, again, for seeing visually what you're going to be doing to the wave when you've finished editing it. Now we've got two main types of fade slopes, equal power and equal gain. You're gonna to wanna to use equal power when you're cross-fading two completely different types of material that are not phase coherent. And th this will help you avoid a drop in volume that can sometimes occur with an equal gain crossfade. Now, if you're gonna use equal gain, typically you're gonna use this when you're crossfading similar types of material. This will help avoid clipping that can occur with an equal power crossfade. And finally, we have different types of curves that you can choose. As you can see when I'm clicking on these, these are affecting our fade curves up above, both for in and out. This is for when you're doing crossfades. Last thing I'm gonna show you as far as fades go is if you're using the Smart Tool, you can now just simply put the cursor in the upper right-hand corner or left-hand corner, click and drag, and now I've just simply created a fade on the fly. So that's the quickest and easiest way to access fades. Also, if you have a fade that's already created, you just simply double-click it with the grabber and that brings up the fades dialog to be able to tweak that particular fade. So this has just been a quick primer on fade ins and fade outs. You definitely want to use these, especially to avoid pops and clicks in the audio after you've made edits. This is Jeff from Obedia. Thanks for checking out the video.